did I ever tell you guys what is the best thing about having a YouTube channel? You may think it's the fame and fortune and just getting a constant uh, parade of gear to review. You think that's why I do it? No, 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 that's not it. That's not it. Why I do it is that everything I do, I get the comments. The comments are incredible, right? Just the other day, <laughs> I did a video about wouldn't it be great if we could have a new generation of brick and mortar dealers so that audiophiles, you guys, could actually hear the gear before you bought it and compare it against other gear and blah, 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 right? That's, that was the subject of that video. And then the comments just started pouring in. Ah, oh, it was great. Because everybody's got opinions. Everybody is in, here's the point of this, everybody is in a bubble. I'm in a bubble. But my bubble gets pierced all the time by you guys. Um, but anyway, some people, of course, said, oh, I love my dealer. Or some people say, I'm in a desert. There's no dealers, direct sale. I just want to buy it and hear it at home for 60 days or 30 days. And I can decide for myself, dealers suck. I'm glad they're all gone and everything's fine this way. I don't never need to go to a dealer. Comments, I just love the comments from guys who say, oh, I live uh, 30 minutes away from four or five dealers. I got my choice of dealers. This is now, this is happening now. Somebody in Denmark said, oh, there's lots and lots of brick and mortar dealers in Denmark. We got no shortage of uh, dealers. Somebody in, uh, in Delaware, Wil Wilmington, Delaware said, oh, I went to Overture Audio. They treated me well. I bought my Focal speakers there. Uh, so lots of people. I want you people to understand that everybody's in a bubble. Not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's just the way life is. But you have to understand that if you're in a desert and you don't have a dealer, that doesn't mean that everybody lives that way, right? That some people go to dealers and have really terrific experiences. And dealers can survive and prosper even now. And I just have to say, do a little side trip here and say that I neglected to point out that New York City has a new location for a dealer that's been around for a while, Adirondack Audio, and they have a location on 44th Street. I was there, and it was weird because I was there just a few months ago. It's called the Hi-Fi Loft. It's on 44th Street, and it's beautiful. It's spacious and bright and open and gorgeous. And I just want to give a little shout out to them. I'm putting up some pictures. And uh, it's unlike any other shop in New York City and, uh, you know, I don't know if you've heard, rents are really high in New York, and yet New York City has four or five or six brick and mortar dealers right here in New York City. So, yeah, yeah. Now, I will say <laughs> that there aren't going to be too many brick and mortar dealers selling affordable audio, and we'll define or I'll define affordable audio as, well, basically like under... 2000 or $2,500 or so because you can't. You can't sell that because almost all of that, you just can't because people are just going to shop the store, go to the store, and then buy it online, and they're just not going to make enough money to pay the rent, keep the lights on. So sadly, that's not doable anymore. So it tends to be for the more expensive stuff is what's being sold at brick-and-mortar shops. It's just the way it is. I wish it wasn't. But again, that seems to be reality. No worries, by the way. Don't get nervous. There will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day coming up later. Now, I have to address, I wouldn't call it the elephant in the room, but it comes up from time to time, is people say that they went to a store, and this has been true for as long as there have been <laughs> audio shops, that they went to a store and they didn't feel that they were treated well or they were disrespected, that sort of thing. And I've heard those stories um, forever. And I believe they're true. But I don't really quite understand why they, so many people feel that way. Because, <laughs> well, first of all, even when I was a kid, even when I was a teenager and I went to stores, I wasn't treated that way. When I was 16, 17 years old and I went to stores, to listen and not buy anything, and that was clear. I didn't feel like anybody was like, hey, kid, get out of here, you know, like, why waste, why the salesman were essentially saying to me, well, you're wasting my time, go away. Now, you know, decades later, I was the salesman. 
and I'll tell you stories from my perspective. Now, I would say if anybody just came in and said, Steve, I'm curious. I've never heard Wilson Watt puppies. Can I hear them? And the store wasn't busy. Let's say it was a midday week. It was hardly any customers there. I would say, sure, I'll play them for you. No problem. If someone came in on a busy Saturday or even Sunday, it could be pretty busy and the store was packed, I'd say, I'm really sorry. This is not a good time. Please come back another time. Yeah, because I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing like three demos at the same time. I can't just casually play Watt Puppies for you right now. I'd probably say something like that, or I would have said something like that. But, you know, some people just come into a store with an attitude, actually, talking about attitude. Sometimes people just come into a, an audio store with an attitude like, I'm the customer and the salesman is there to entertain me. Like, it's their right to hear stuff. Buying, not buying, it is, they walked in and, and the salesman is basically their gear monkey. Like, I want to hear this, play it for me now. And when the salesperson senses that, well, it, it might not come to a good end. Uh, or it's going to be a very quickie in out kind of deal. And that person may feel like, well, I'm not going to go back to that store when I'm ready to buy something. They might say, well, I'm definitely not going to go back there. And that's, that's been known to happen, that they feel that they should have been treated better. I understand. It, it, there's a lot of miscommunication that happens in audio stores and in life in general, and that's just one example. But I'm just telling you it from my perspective, that if there was respect on both sides, customer and salesman, it usually works out pretty well. That's, that's the way I would see that story. So coming up in the middle of August will be the fourth anniversary of the Audiophiliac Daily Show. I've made about 1,200 episodes. If you haven't seen the early ones, <laughs> uh, they will make you laugh, I guarantee it, because they're pretty, pretty crude. This isn't a high production show. This isn't slick or polished right now. But the really early ones are pretty darn basic, very, very basic. Uh, and uh, well, it's amazing that it lasts. What can I tell you? So this is polished compared to the early ones. Anyway, so big changes are coming to the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and I will announce those in a special, I was going to say broadcast, but in a special episode in mid-August. Um, and, you know, this, this segment of the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day, which I will present in a second or two, I'm really proud of that. You know, it, uh, it comes out of doing these occasional episodes where it's just Audiophiliac Viewer Systems. Uh, that's very rewarding, but to do it in every episode, which just sort of happened <laughs> organically, um, it's great that you guys get to see each other's stuff. You know, high-end systems, we did one the other day with a 14-year-old kid's system. Women, audiophiles, it's all here. The viewership is diverse, and that is hugely important to me. So before I, you know, before I started the YouTube channel, I was a writer. I wrote for CNET, I wrote for Stereophile here and there, I wrote a lot for Home Theater Magazine and Sound and Vision. It was really great. I enjoyed being a writer. But it was nothing like this, where I talked to you guys directly, and better yet, you guys talk directly back to me through the comments. That's, I don't have to wonder what you people are thinking, I know what you're thinking. That's amazing. In the history of, uh, of writing, no one knew. It, newspaper people didn't have that instantaneous reaction, right? Only on YouTube is the only place, that, and, and I guess on the internet too. But I think it's even faster. The connection here seems as, uh, just amazing, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. So now, speaking of the time, and now is the time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. This one comes from Max. He lives in Stockholm, Sweden. He's 51 years old. His journey, his audiophile journey, started just seven months ago after he saw my own Walsh 2000 speaker review. He bought them. He loves them. This streamer is a Blue Sound Node 2. Dak, 
is a Denifreps Aries II, but he did a lot of mods to it, including resonance control for the cover and also resonance control for the main circuit board and the transformer. A lot of tweaks going on inside that little DAC. The amp is vintage. It's a 1989 AccuPhase E405 integrated. The turntable is a clear audio concept. He's playing vinyl about 90% of the time, but he also has a vintage ERA 444 turntable and also a Techniques SL10. Thanks, Max. Your sound is going places. Okay, Audiophiliac viewers, you have outdone yourselves yet again. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is that show. It is that show, the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And if you like what I do here, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Doing so, super easy, hit the freaking button. And when you do, hit the bell so you'll be notified every time there is an incredible new episode. Even better than that, if that's even possible, is to check out the Patreon, which can be found at patreon.com slash audiophiliac. And the link to that most assuredly resides in the description below this video. There's a lot more information in the description below this video. I always say that below this video. There's a ton of stuff back there. If you want to buy the t-shirt or the mug or all that other stuff, it's all down there, way down there, right down there. You know, you can find me on Instagram, on IGTV at steve.guttenberg. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. There's links to that stuff also in the description. This description is almost as good as the video. That's what I'm saying here, right? And now I can say my work here is finally and at last complete. Thank you so much for watching, and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.